What's up class, Evans here. It's time to do some 3D sketching. And if you're not confident, I'm gonna give you the confidence you need to get it done right. Before we start sketching, you've got one thing to get done. Set up your notebook. Sketching exercise 3D at the top, page number. Mine is on page nine. And if yours isn't on page nine, that's okay. Because it's your book. Put your signature at the bottom and then today's date. The dates at the bottom are for either when we start or when we end. Remember we are reflecting how actual engineers keep track of their notes and their work. Flip to the front to the table of contents and add sketching exercise 3D. Put the correct date and the correct page number to match. Now, if you look, we have nine different shapes. I'm gonna start with the first one, a pyramid. I'm gonna to try to go over how to get it drawn and how to shade it and some common mistakes I see students do. I'm not gonna fixate on fixing it inside of a certain size box like we did with the 2D assignment, so I won't be drawing seven by seven boxes or anything like that. So you can scale this up a little bit or scale it down a little bit. Don't make them so small that they're hard to see and don't make them too big that they fill a whole page. Still try to keep it relatively tight in size. So with the pyramid, this is one mistake I see students do. They draw their pyramid like this. And that's their pyramid. And I think they do that because they know the pyramid has sides facing different directions and they draw it flat because it sits flat on the earth. But that's not the way the pyramid looks. If you notice, this line continues down and it actually should be like that. And there shouldn't be a line there at all. So we don't wanna do that. The way that you're gonna draw yours, I would pick one point on the paper and I'm gonna make a line to the left, not dark, a line to the right, and then a line roughly not to the middle, but a little bit over to the side. This is trying to match the way that we see it. Once I have these three lines, left, right, and one a little bit off center, now I'm gonna take a point on the off center one and I wanna draw a line going back and then one going towards the left. And somewhere in here, my pyramid rests. Now I wouldn't darken in these lines just yet, but that's my pyramid. It also has a little bit of line in the back that you can see, because it's a square pyramid, like the ones that we see, the Mayans and Incas and Egyptians, civilizations across the world have made them this way. We're now going to shade them. Now to shade, it's not that complicated of a process. As I draw, I usually have my fingers pretty close to the end of the pencil. When I shade, I back up so I don't put too much pressure and make dark lines. Now I'm gonna take my pencil and I'm gonna start roughly going back and forth across my triangle there and trying to fill in that space. You wanna be light and you wanna to try to keep them inside the lines as best as possible. What I'm doing in art is called hatching. I'm drawing lines very close together. And then I'm gonna come back with my pencil and do what's called cross hatching. I'm gonna draw lines going the opposite direction. And you can hatch in different directions. Remember the point is to be light so that you can control where your pencil goes. And if you notice, I'm kind of avoiding this area to kind of match the way it looks. Do not draw dark. It's hard to erase even if you have a really good eraser that's meant for art, these white ones, 
even if you draw dark, it's kind of hard to erase it. You'll still see a pretty dark line and it'll just smear it around. So don't draw darkly. Now, if you have a hard time with pencil control on this one and you see a lot of white lines in between it and you don't like that, um, there's another method you can use is you can take your finger or your thumb and just kind of smear it around. I always remember my art teacher told us we couldn't do that. But I mean, when you're making art, it seems pretty subjective to me. And then you might want to come over with a eraser and erase those edges. And then I'm going to darken in the edges of the actual pyramid. Oh, it went off a little bit there. Now you've got your pyramid. The next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the very last one. It's a cylinder. Now, there's something that I've noticed, a common mistake with cylinders, is uh, students will do these two mistakes. They'll draw their cylinder and they'll draw a circle. You're not drawing this part. They'll draw a circle and then they'll go down and then they'll make it flat on the bottom. And if you look at the cylinder, it doesn't look anything like that. It's not flat on the bottom and it's not a circle at the top. If you take a look at it, think of like a can. A can is a circle on the top, but if I look at it from the edge, it's not a circle, it's an oval. And if I look at the bottom of it, it's also an oval. Even though it sits flat on the table, and I know it's, parallel to the table because it's sitting on the table. When it sits on the table, it may be flat there, but you're looking at this at an angle, which means you're gonna see like an oval-like arch. So that's the way that you're gonna draw this. When you draw this, which I'll erase now because that's not what it's gonna look like. You're gonna first draw an oval. Now, you can freehand an oval if you'd like, or you can kind of use the box method, like I showed you with the 2D circles. I'm gonna do mine four by two, and I'm gonna aim for the very middles here. I'm gonna make one arc meeting right at these points. Now try your best to not make an eye or a football shape. You're making a oval. And once I get that, I'm gonna try to erase away my box. And I should have left with an oval. Now this oval has a height. So I'm gonna go down some squares. And that same oval, I'm now gonna draw just the bottom of it. So it's gonna end here and start here. Now for the shading part, to do an oval, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than the example I gave you, but I'm gonna show you something called gradation. Now, if you look at the side of this, think of it like a, like a rectangle. If I had a rectangle, it would just have one gray shade just from the light that's around it. But if it's arched, it might be darker on the sides. So I'm gonna shade darker on the sides and come up lighter towards the middle. And that will make it much more round looking. 
You can also leave kind of little shine marks like they do in the example. I'm going to start darker on the edges and you can have your fingers closer to the pencil end and then back up and make lighter strokes. Maybe back up a little bit more, make even lighter ones. It's up to you. It's about pressure. How much pressure are you applying with the pencil? more pressure on the ends to make darker lines and then lessen how much pressure you put with your fingers. And then we're gonna smooth it out. And that's how you do a gradation, going from dark to light. Now you can come in with your eraser and you can make a little shine line if you want. I like to go dark to light to dark. Some students, they like to try and keep it consistent and just go dark to light. It's up to you. Now, if you've noticed, uh, a lot of these are very similar. If you look back, we have one, two, three, four shapes that are very cylinder looking. Um, we have one that's a cylinder and then it arcs out. We have one that's a cylinder, arc at the bottom, curves in. We have one that's a cylinder shape, and then it's just a parabola. So you can do those real quickly now that I've showed you this process to make these other three, and then just work on the shading to make them look like they are. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll be walking around and helping students.